Hey everyone, here's chapter 21. Going to the bathroom at school just plain sucks. I have to be taken out of my chair, lifted, on, lifted onto the toilet, and held there so I don't fall. Then someone has to wipe me when I'm finished. It's not so bad when it's mom, but it's awful when a classroom aide has to do that for me. She's required to wear plastic gloves, I guess in case I have some kind of infection or disease. It's completely embarrassing. I don't usually have to go first thing in the morning, but I'm so nervous on Tuesday, I ask to be taken twice. Then I go to all my inclusion classes. The students who tried out for the quiz team can't stop chatting about the test. I listen to every word. I couldn't believe how easy it was, Connor boasts. I bet I got a higher score than you did, Claire says, her voice cocky. I thought the geography questions were off the map, Rose adds. I had never even heard of some of those countries. Jessica shakes her head. The math part wasn't much fun either. I can't believe we even care about a dumb test for a quiz team, Rodney comments. Because the competition is on television, man, Connor replies. Big time TV co coverage here in town, and if we make the finals, we go to DC, where it will all be televised all over the country. If we win, we get to be on Good Morning America. My grandma in Philly can watch me and my auntie in Frisco. I'll be famous. What do you mean if we win, Connor? Claire asks him, don't you mean when we stomp the competition? Yeah, for sure. I already bought a new suit for when I'm on TV. Rose rolls her eyes. I thought this was a team contest, Connor, she reminds him. Hey, the team would be nothing without me. He holds his hand up in the air for high fives. I listen quietly from the back of the room. When the bell rings to indicate that it's time for Mr. Dimming's class, my palms feel sweaty. Catherine pushes me into the room and whispers into my ear. Relax, you rock. Mr. Dimming gets the class quiet and takes attendance. Why do teachers go so slowly when you want something from them? Finally, he removes a sheet of paper from his briefcase. I graded your quiz team tests last night, and since many of those who tried out for the competition team are in this class, I'm going to share the results with you now. The teachers of the other classes who have students who tried out have been given the same list and are at this moment reading the results to them. So read the list, Connor shouts, getting up from his desk. If classroom behavior were a determining factor for making the team, Connor, you might be in trouble, Mr. Dimming says. Please quiet down for a moment. That shuts him up. He sits down heavily. First of all, I'm very proud of all of you who took the test. It was quite challenging, and all, you all did extremely well. Rose raises her hand. Yes, Rose? Can we see the questions and answers later so we know where we messed up? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we'll use this test as a learning tool to study for the real competition. But anyone is free to see the test and check their responses. Please read the names, Connor says as politely as I've ever heard him. Mr. Deming smiles. Okay, will do. I shall read the alternates first. Two fifth graders, two from sixth grade. Amanda Firestone, Molly North, Elena Rodriguez, Rodney Mazel. My heart falls to my shoes, which is not quite to the floor, but close. How could I have missed so many questions? Maybe my thumb slipped and I pushed the wrong letters. Catherine squeezed my hand. Molly and Rodney screech with joy. Amanda and Elena are sixth graders. Connor is qu noticeably quiet. And now, Mr. Dimming continues, the names of the four students who scored the highest and will represent our school at the local competition downtown. The alternates will accompany them and will be called upon if any of the team members are unable to participate in any way. Are we ready? Ready, Connor says softly. I notice he has his fingers crossed behind his back. I'm proud to report that all four are from our classroom. He pauses. To know all the finalists are from fifth grade blows me away. Way to go. We torched sixth grade? Awesome, Rodney says. Now read the names before Connor wets his pants. Connor reaches over and smacks Ronnie on the back of his head. Mr. Dimming takes a deep breath. The top four scorers and members of our quiz team will be Connor Bates. Connor interrupts him with a wild whooping cheer, of course. And if I may continue, Mr. Dimming says over his glasses, we are also pleased to welcome Claire Wilson and Rose Spencer. Claire's smile is smug, but that's only three, Connor says, looking around in confusion. I can count, Connor, Mr. Dimming replies dryly. So who's the last person on the team? Molly asks. Earthquake report. TV weather guy feels some strange activity coming from a local school. Could it be a girl's heartbeat? Pounding too hard? Mr. Dimming clears his throat. 
I must apologize. I think we all underestimated a member of our class. Earthquake report. This is the big one. He can. He continues. In my 15 years of running this competition, I've never had a student make a perfect score in the practice test. It is designed to be challenging to weed out the weaker candidates. In a word, in a word, it's hard. Tell me about it, Connor, Connor mumbles. When Melody Brooks took the little practice quiz with us last week, I thought it was lucky accident that she did so well. But yesterday, Melanie blew us all away. She got every single question right. He pauses, making sure everyone is taking this in, and then he says, all of them. Earthquake report. Walls are tumbling everywhere. So she's on the team? Rose asks, disbelieve in her voice. Yes, she's on the team. But, but we'll look so weird. Claire counters. Everybody will stare at us. I'm not going to have any of that kind of talk. Do you understand? Mr. D says sternly. I'm very proud of Melody. I regret. I underestimated her, and I'm glad to have her on our team. Earthquake report. Call the paramedics. A girl in fifth grade is about to explode. Everybody in this class turns to look at me. Catherine gives me a hug. Rose flashes me a smile, and I try not to kick and drip and make my teammates sorry that I'll be on the team with them. Will the whiz kids folks be cool with Melody? Molly asks. Mr. Dimming looks thoughtful. I'll contact the t quiz team officials and let them know about our special circumstances, he says, but there's no concern of yours. Now listen up. Team members will meet every day after school for two hours for the next two weeks, right up until the first competition. Practice sessions are mandatory. Here's the paperwork for your parents to read and sign. I need it back tomorrow. Earthquake report. Expect big aftershocks. Nothing like this has ever seen before. The more I think about it, the more excited I get. Television, pressure, people looking at me. I can feel myself getting tense and tight. My arms and legs start the tornado spastic dance. My head jerks. I try not to, but I screech just a little. Everybody turns at the sound. I can see Molly and Claire jerking their hands, kicking their legs, and making crazy noises. A few people giggle. Mr. Dimming's face grows tight. I aim all of my energy at my thumbs and point to go. Pa Catherine gets a message and hurries me out of there. I want to find a hole and hide in it.